I'm often asked, where do you even begin to downsize an extremely cluttered home or a hoarded room? So today I'm sharing my pre-planning strategies, meaning the things I would do before even getting started with a client, because if you don't have some plan, you can get really overwhelmed and just want to give up and we don't want that. I want you to be able to focus and spend a few hours or a few days working on a project to its full completion. Hi, I'm professional organizer, Katherine Lawrence. If you're joining me for the first time, welcome to my channel. Here I go beyond the surface of simple organizing techniques and dig a little deeper into the world of extreme decluttering and large scale projects. You'll get an insider's perspective on the life of a professional organizer and discover the common hurdles that hinder our quest for organization. I offer additional coaching and courses to support you on your journey. For access to these resources, check out the links in the description below. I've had some folks ask about where they can find the hoarders episodes that I've worked on. You can find them on Netflix and here is a list of the episodes currently available. Season 12, episode 2, 3, 5, 7, and 8, and season 13, episodes 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, let's dive in. So where do we start? Extreme clearouts and whole home downsizing jobs are just different than light organizing projects like refreshing a closet. There are three things I recommend doing first before sorting and arranging the space. First step in pre-planning your decluttering project is to have a clear vision of how you want the space to look after the transformation. It's important to start with the end in mind. This is true whether you're helping a client or working in your own space. By envisioning the end result, you'll be able to make informed decisions about what belongs in the space and what should be evicted. Let's say you're transforming a cluttered space into a new craft room. You wouldn't keep everyday clothes and shoes in the space because you'll need room for your crafting supplies and to set up a work table. By sticking to your vision, you can prioritize the space's purpose and eliminate items that don't align with that vision. Remember, during the decluttering process, focus first on whether items are going to stay or go rather than worrying about how they will be organized. The second technique to ease overwhelm and build momentum is to get buy-in before the project begins. Predeterminations can make a significant difference when keeping a project on task. For example, asking questions like, can all stained or damaged clothing be eliminated or can expired foods be tossed? These predeterminations streamline the process and reduce decision fatigue. This is essential when starting a project with a client or a friend or a family member. It makes things go a lot faster. You don't want to argue with someone over every little decision. And I can tell you from working as a professional organizer that if you can not get buy-in on anything or on a very few number of categories, you're not going to make progress and it may not be worth your time or the client's money to do the project. I can absolutely tell within a few hours if a hoarding clear out will be successful based on the amount of initial buy-in from the homeowner. When you watch Hoarders season 12, episode seven, the Oklahoma couple, Margie and Bethel, you'll see the team really struggling to get buy-in from Margie on what things can be tossed. Things that many folks would consider a throwaway item like clothing damaged by mice or uh, rotting food. But as we started the second day of work, Matt Paxton remarks that he still does not have a definition of what trash is. This is not a good sign. And when you watch the episode, you'll see how that impacted the outcome. Now, of course, this is hoarders, so these are extreme cases. But if you are working with a client or family member, uh, in a cluttered space and you're not getting buy-in, it is very unlikely that that space can be decluttered by traditional methods. Next, when you are starting a big decluttering project, it's important to plan your exit strategies. 
This means having a predetermined plan for where items will go once decisions are made about them. Without clear exit strategies, you can get boxed in or inadvertently mix items back together, which can be frustrating and counterproductive. Plan on labeling bags and boxes, designated categories like trash, recycle, scrap, shred, donate, and items that need a decision at a later time. Knowing where things will go while you're in the sorting and decision-making process will prevent unnecessarily re-reviewing the items again and keep the momentum going. So set up staging areas like moving the donation boxes to the garage or designating a specific area in the driveway for a trash pickup or the bed in the guest room for things that need to find homes in other areas. During the filming of Hoarders, there's always a period of consultation and planning days before the actual project begins. This time allows the team to assess the situation, uh, come up with a plan and get buy-in. You can apply the same strategy on your own decluttering projects or when you're helping others. By conducting a consultation or a walkthrough beforehand, you get a better understanding of the space, you can set expectations, and develop a plan of attack. If you want to take your decluttering skills to the next level, I encourage you to enroll in my extreme decluttering course, Tackle the Hoard. It's designated to provide you with practical strategies, expert guidance, and the confidence to tackle even the most challenging clutter. I put the link in the description of this video. So what room will you declutter next? Let me know in the comments and please like and subscribe for more videos on decluttering, downsizing, and the business of organizing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.